Hi all and welcome to this A-Level PE Sport and Society video. This is a paper two topic and we're looking at the development of elite performers. Now what I've done in this uh, video is there's a chance to pause it, have a bit of thinking time, make some notes, join in so to speak. So it's quite interactive or you can just watch it all the way through. I uh, hope you enjoy it, hope it helps with your vision. Good luck with all your exams and stuff coming up. Yeah, let's go. So I've got two ladies here, and you might know their names. If you want to have a little guess, pause the video now. So their names are, we've got Helen Glover on the left. She's uh, an Olympic rower, and we've got Lizzie Yarnold on the right. And they have three things in common, okay? Other than being Team GB stars. So you can have a think about that if you want. You want to pause the video, go for it. So what they have in common is they've both won gold medals at two Olympics. Only two other women in British history have won more. And that is Laura Kenny, who's a cyclist, and Charlotte Dujardin, who is a dressage performer at the Olympics. Now, the three things they have in common are they never really started out in these sports. They came to these sports later in life. They were both outstanding county athletes. Helen Glover was an outstanding cross-country long-distance runner, and Lizzie Arnold was more of a pentathlete, power athlete. And they both came through UK Sport Talent ID schemes. So they were spotted, they had potential, they swapped sports and became two of the most successful women in Olympic sport that we've ever produced. Now, Talent ID schemes are looking for personal factors and those things help them to indicate whether someone's going to be able to progress to make it to the top, particularly in Olympic sports. Commitment and self-discipline is really important. Determination to succeed, so they're mentally tough, they're really driven, they've got a desire to achieve, high motivation, they've got high personal motivation of doing it for themselves. They can self-sacrifice. They can stop meeting up with friends when they need to train. They can not go out to restaurants or pubs. They've got to stop maybe drinking alcohol or change their diet to make sure they can succeed. They have high pain tolerance. So they're put through maybe testing to see how much they can endure when they're doing training. They have high levels of confidence. So they really believe in themselves. They've got utter faith in their own potential and they're able to then push themselves even when they fail. They've got high skill level and they've got natural talent. You can see that they've maybe moved from in one sport, they've produced really high levels and maybe they could move to another sport, a bit like the two I talked about, and move to another sport and transfer those skills and talent. And they've got high levels of fitness. Fitness testing will be a huge factor in ID schemes. There are mentors who help these people progress, people who've already been at the top and they mentor them to see if they can progress and the mentors will probably also be involved in whether they think this person is going on the right lines and that person's also there to help the athlete if they have any trouble how to train how to eat now social and economic factors are also kind of an, an indicator and because they're your support network elite sports people often have certain social and economic characteristics talent id people are not looking for those but we've found over time that often people who make it to the top have this structure around them. And the national governing bodies, UK Sport, for people who haven't got this network, can help build that around them to help them succeed. They've often got friends and family support to transport them, to help motivate them, to pick them up when they have bad losses. They've got financial support from family for care, travel, expenses. At a very young age, you don't get much national governing body or lottery or sponsorship money. Now, equal opportunity and anti-discriminatory practices in sport are being outlawed. And so national governing bodies have to help people from all walks of life, not just those who've got the wealth to support themselves. So it's really important to try and encourage people from all backgrounds and whatever financial constraints they might have to help those people reach elite standards. We might miss out on potential Olympic champions or elite sports people. High quality supportive education, so they've been through education often, they've had a really successful time at education, just both academically and sportingly, and that 
is often indicated they're going to go on and succeed. Structured level of competition to progress. So they've been maybe involved in a sport and they've gone through the cycle of maybe school sport, club sport, county sport, regional sport, national sport. High levels of media coverage in a sport can encourage people to go into it. UK sport is the ultimate national governing body for the country. And it's an umbrella governing body, which means it, it looks after not just the four nations. It also looks after national governing bodies and helps fund them, especially the sports linked to the Olympics. Its real focus is working on developing high performance sport. Now, I talked in the one about Sport England, about how Sport England also looks at increasing participation. UK sport's really about developing high performance sport in the UK. It distributes national lottery funding. Now, national lottery funding helps fund our elite performers in Olympic sports, and with that funding, they're able to focus full time on training, development, rehab in a focus to winning Olympic gold medals. This came in in the late 90s during a time when Team GB almost rarely won more than one gold medal. Now we win 20 or 30 in every Olympics. It also provides funding for National Institutes of Sport, which I'll talk a bit about later. UK Sport is the lead agency for talent ID schemes, and that works with the Engli England uh, Institute of Sport. I'll put this link for Sporting Giants, which is one of those schemes where Helen Glover came from. I'll put that link in the description. The EIS is based in Manchester, but it does have other places for different sports around the country, such as Sheffield, Lillishaw and Loughborough. It generates income by offering services to national governing bodies. So national governing bodies will pay the EIS to have some of their performers go there for medicine, sport analysis, diet, uh, psychological analysis, etc. So they're trying to work on really small things that are going to give athletes and performers that little 1% that's going to improve them. It works on developing and improving elite performers in really small ways, in technique or a specialist coach or a nutritionist or even rehab. Focus on sports science, so the effects of training, nutrition, psychology. Helps them with medicine that they might need to rehab, to recover from illness or injury, strength and conditioning to improve. And there's also people to talk about performance lifestyle to help them improve how they organise their life so the training can be focused on. So it helps them with time management, budgeting, media, sponsorship, how to deal with those to make themselves more successful and give themselves more time to train. If you want to play a quiz, I'll put the link in the description. Also, there's some other videos to help you with your revision. Best of luck with any upcoming exams or assessments, and good luck.